Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast with Phil Graham. We help you master Facebook ads and give you an unfair advantage over your competition. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast, episode 312. I'm Phil Graham. Today, I'm going to be teaching you about mastering Facebook ad metrics and measuring your success. There are so many misconceptions about ad metrics and so many people that either aren't doing it or they're doing it very wrong and it's costing them a lot of money. So in this episode, I'm going to show you and talk to you about how we do it because I believe that's one of our secret sauces and something that's really helped us stand out and have tons of success. So welcome to this week's episode. It's one of my most favorite times of the week when I record this podcast. And I'm so glad you're here. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. And I want to start off by talking a little bit about the problem. What is the problem? Here's the thing. Without effective metrics and the ability to not only have the data, but effectively analyze the data, most advertisers will fail. Whether that means they're doing well and they're just making way less money than they should be, or in a lot of cases, they're not making money and they're losing money. You don't want that to happen. Analyzing data may not sound fun to talk about, yet it's one of the most important things that you could ever focus on if you want to succeed when it comes to marketing and advertising and success in business. And the ability to do it really well is a skill. I teach people how to do this stuff all the time. And it's really one of the most important factors to an advertiser's success. So while most advertisers are not strategic and they just randomly run ads and so many of them fail, how they evaluate data is even worse. Don't let that be you. I want to teach you today about what we do and how we evaluate data. And by the way, I'm going to be opening a few one-on-one -on -one coaching slots in the near future focused on helping clients master data when it comes to ads. So whether you might want help on that or coaching on everything related to Facebook ads, or if you're looking for someone to actually run ads for you so you can do what you do best. For any of that stuff, if you want to get in touch, you can just go to my website, philgramdigital.com, or you can DM me on Instagram, at philgramdigital, and I would love to connect with you. We'll get on a short Zoom call and go from there. So the first thing I want to start with is a myth that is out there. There are lots of data companies and tracking companies that all talk about how they have the magic unicorn answer and they can see everything and if you just buy their service or their product or their software, et cetera, then you'll have 100% clean data. That is not true. It doesn't mean there's not some good data companies out there, but they do not have all the answers. They don't have every data that Facebook or Google can't get to because of iOS privacy issues. Because I guarantee you, if they did, they would have been bought out a long time ago for insane amounts of money. So yes, there's good companies out there, but don't be fooled into thinking if you sign up with one of these companies, you're gonna just magically have this clean data that is perfect, because that is not reality. So don't be fooled by that. So we know that data is a challenge and that a huge factor to success in ads comes from getting good data, and then secondly, most importantly, <laughs> knowing how to evaluate it properly. So let's talk about the solution. Here's the thing. You've got to commit to getting highly skilled at evaluating the data and let everyone else randomly run ads with no strategy like chickens with their heads cut off and then complain about why it's not working. You've got to know what data to pay attention to and where to bring all the sources to in one place. And then how best do you take action based on that? So I'm going to talk about that today and let's talk about how we do it. 
I really do believe this is a major secret sauce. And what I'm going to teach you today in terms of how we do it is the what, but it's going to take some time. It's not like just going to magically make you great at it. You've got to actually put it in the work and put in the practice and do this for a while. It's kind of like picking up a sport or a musical instrument. You might know how to do it, but it doesn't mean you're good at it right away. But the good news is anybody and everybody can get good at this if they put in the work. So that's great. So how do we do it? Number one, we aggregate data from multiple trusted sources into one place to analyze. This is a big, big deal. So some people only look at one piece of data, maybe a Facebook ads manager, or they look at something else, but just one. I look at multiple pieces of data because I know that all data is not equal. And you could have 10 different data companies tracking your stuff. You could have the platforms you're advertising on and your website tracking your stuff. And the numbers never match. They're not equal. And that's normal. But when you actually put them all into one place and you analyze the effectiveness of what's going on, even though it doesn't always match, you can still absolutely get enough data and clean enough data to make great decisions. Now, if you only use data from one source, it's way more challenging and you're probably going to put yourself at a disadvantage. So I'm going to talk about the some of the trusted sources we use to bring data in from. One of them, obviously, is Facebook Ads Manager, of course. That's where we place a lot of our ads. We run ads on other platforms, too, like Google, YouTube, etc. So wherever we're running ads, that ads manager, that company, we bring data in from them directly, of course. So that's one. Another source that we use for data is Google Analytics. That's a very good source for data as long as you have it set up correctly and hooked in correctly and all that stuff. That's important. But Google Analytics is a second source of data. A third source of data that we use, it depends on the situation. If it's a website or if it's maybe a Shopify site, for example, we either use the website stats or WordPress stats for that type of site. If it's Shopify, we use Shopify stats. Or if it's something else, we use the stats of wherever the site is being hosted, whether that's normal through that site's system or a plugin, whatever the case may be. It, it just depends on where the site is, but we use stats from that as well. And then another one I like to use is heat map tracking. There's a bunch of different ones out there. One of my favorites is called Hot Jar, H-O-T-J-A-R. You can even start using the free version. You don't even have to pay for it. And you get a lot of good data. You even get video recordings of what people do on your landing pages and website. It's crazy. And then if you do have any other data companies that you might use, that would be added to the list. So what I would do is, I would bring data in from all of these different sources into one central place. I wouldn't just look at them on each of the individual places. I would aggregate them in to one place where there, you can then look at them all together. And that is a game changer. That can make all the difference in the world. Then you've got all the right data in one place. And the key at that point is not the data itself, but how good you are at analyzing it, evaluating it, and then taking action based off of what that data is telling you. And obviously, you've got to know what to run long enough, when you should turn things off, when you should keep it going. That comes with experience and skill. It's another thing I coach people on quite a bit because it takes some time to learn that stuff. A lot of people turn winners off way too soon. They didn't even realize they're turning off a winner, but that happens a lot. So the key here is finding all the different sources that you have data and bringing it into one place, where then in that one place, you're looking at all of it, you evaluate it in good increments, not like every day or anything like that. Yeah, you need to let a little bit of time go by but you evaluate it and then make decisions based off of what you're finding. 
Now, where do we bring it? Because you're probably wondering, well, where the heck do we put it? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> a couple different places. I've used Google Sheets a lot. I call it a dashboard. We create a dashboard that we bring everything into and we pop the numbers in, it auto populates other things. And then I can see not only the numbers I just brought in for whatever time frame we're talking about, but I can see how that compares to what we brought in before. Whether that's weekly or two, every two weeks or every month, I can compare and I can see trends much quicker than somebody just randomly looking at it like in Facebook ads manager. Like I said, it's almost not even fair when you do it this way. It's really powerful. Another place I like to bring data in, and I'm going to talk more about this in the future, is some software called Notion. I'll have an episode on this in the future about how we use it. That's another great way to go. Either one of these could be really good for your dashboard. I've been thinking about giving away the dashboard we use to everyone on the podcast, everyone who listens, because... I've had so many people ask me for it and I've mentioned it before. It's a little bit challenging because we create a dashboard for certain clients and it's always customized based off of exactly what the goals are for that client. And so they're not all the same, but in general, I can certainly create a dashboard that's going to apply to most businesses and most of you guys. So watch for that because when I do that, I will announce that on this podcast and that will be insanely valuable. All right, let's talk about the data that we track because now you know that we get trusted data from trusted sources. We bring it all together, not just from one source, but from three, four, five, six different sources. We bring it all together in a dashboard where I then can evaluate it and compare it to previous data, et cetera. So we've got all that. That already puts you way ahead of most people, and that's a huge advantage. But now I want to talk about what kind of data I look at the most and what I track, because that's also important. Some people don't track enough things. Some people track the wrong things. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to go with this. So I'm going to just kind of run down a list of some of the important things we track. So some of the obvious ones are... How much does it cost to get a lead? That's an important data point. Also, what does it cost to get a customer or get a sale? That's important. And then cost per click. How much are your clicks costing? Those are all super important. Those are kind of close to the top of the list. Also, you need to know things like, what is your average order value? Like, if, especially if you're in e-commerce, what's your average order value? And then no matter what, whether you're in e-commerce or not in e-commerce, knowing what your conversion rate is as well, either in your store, your shopping cart, your website, whether you have a digital course or something else, you've got to know what your conversion rate is. So those are obvious and pretty much no brainers, but still they need to be said because they're super important. So those are things that we track frequently. In addition to that, I also look at link click-through rate. This is really important because this actually tells you what percentage of people who see your ad are actually clicking to go where you want them to go, whether that's your website, your sales page, landing page, wherever you're sending them. And every industry has a benchmark. We have benchmarks for all industries and we know where it should be. And we know if it's underperforming or overperforming. And so you've got to really track that link click-through rate because if the link click-through rate is not good, that is a big red flag that maybe either your audience is not right or your ad is not good or both. So you really got to watch that carefully and do not get that mixed up with the regular click-through rate. If there's just, if you're looking at the column that just says CTR click-through rate and not link click-through rate, you're going to have trouble because the regular click-through rate includes all clicks on the ad. It could be a like, a comment, a share, stuff like that. You want link click-through rate, which is just people that literally click to go to your website. That's really important. See, that's got to be tracked. We also, of course, track the amount of link clicks we get for the money. That's really important. Another big one is CPM, which is cost per thousand. 
it really shocks me that a lot of advertisers either don't know what that means or they don't actually track it. But that's actually the cost of your ads. And so let's say you're advertising, you're not doing very well. Maybe you're doing worse than you were last month and you think something is wrong with your ads. Well, what if the cost per thousand just went up by, you know, double? Then maybe your ads were fine. It's just the cost went up. Or if it didn't go up, then maybe there is a problem with your ad. So you've got to know that cost per thousand and not just know it and look at it, but bring it into the dashboard and track it effectively because that will help you so much. Another thing we track is frequency. So this can be tracked for each ad set and ad that you run. Frequency will tell you on average how often people in your audience that you're targeting have seen that actual ad. And so, of course, you don't want somebody to see the exact same ad like 25 times. I'm sure you've had that happen before where you, like, you keep having, having something come up on your feed and you're like, get, get off of my screen. I've seen this a million times. That doesn't work. It just annoys people. So you've got to track frequency so you know when to either turn it off or change the creative or, or change the audience. Those are all important things. Another piece of data that we like to track is video views. Now, I like to typically track people that watch at least 25% of the videos, and we can help tell what videos are working and what aren't by those video views. We can also build retargeting audiences from that and do a lot of cool stuff, but that's really important. Another a couple important ones, impressions and reach. Those are not as important, but they're still Overall, they need to be on the list, on the dashboard, so that you evaluate how many people you're reaching. Impressions is just the total number of times your ads were seen. Reach is the unique number of people that saw your ads. So let's say everybody saw your ad twice. You could have 100,000 impressions and 50,000 reach, for example. Hopefully that makes sense. Obviously, ad spend needs to be tracked, of course. And then, like I said earl earlier, conversion rate. So not only conversion rate for what conversion rate is it for a sale, but also conversion rate for leads. Like if you have a download that you're offering somebody, or let's say you're offering a webinar that they can register for, what percentage of people that come to that landing page where you have the offer are converting, whether they're buying or they're signing up and giving you their email? You need to know what that is because just like there's benchmarks for link click-through rate, there's also benchmarks for conversion rates for sales and for leads, and it differs for each industry. So you need to know what that is for you and then know if you're above or below where it should be. And then once you know all this stuff, like I said, knowing the stuff is like knowing the rules of how to play basketball. Just because you know how to play doesn't make you good at it, but it's a good first step. Once you know it, you've got to put it into action, evaluate it, adapt to it, make changes because of it, and continually improve and refine that process. And that's what can make you not only good at it, but great at it. So it can hopefully become your secret sauce too. So putting it all together, my friends, data and skill, your skill, are many times the most important factors to an advertiser's success. And like I said before, let most advertisers, including your competitors, run non-strategic, crappy sales pitch ads with bad testing and bad data. Let them do that. If you commit to learning this stuff the right way and becoming a pro at this data stuff, it could change your life. I love this stuff. It's helped me so much and so many others. So make sure you guys focus on mastering these Facebook ad metrics and really learning how to properly measure and create success based off of measuring, evaluating, adapting, and putting into action what you learn from that data. And that will separate you from so many other advertisers. I hope that was helpful, my friends. There's a lot of great stuff coming up in upcoming episodes. Thank you guys so much for being here. Episode 312 is in the books. I will talk to you guys on next week's show. Peace out. 
Thanks for listening to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast. Please remember to subscribe and share this with all your friends. For show notes, more tips, and to learn more about Phil, please visit philgramdigital.com slash podcast.